Hey everyone, this is Michael with MTS4K. Today in this video, I'm gonna be showing you how to swap out the solid state drive in the new Steam Deck OLED model. It is a little bit different than swapping out the solid state drive in the LCD Steam Deck. So I just wanted to get this video out there for anybody who has any questions or is interested in doing this. So you can kind of see exactly what it looks like inside and what steps you need to do to get this swapped out. First things first, don't put the Steam Deck to sleep. Make sure to actually shut the deck down completely from the start menu. Just go ahead and choose shut down. And then once the Steam Deck's completely turned off, wait a couple seconds and hold the volume up and the power button at the same time to boot into the BIOS menu. From here, go ahead and click on the setup utility button, then power in the left column, and then turn on battery storage mode and click yes when prompted. By turning this on, you're basically telling the Steam Deck to not power on at all, even if the power button is pressed until it's been plugged into a charger, just to prevent the Steam Deck from turning on while you're working on it. Now let's get into the teardown. One thing I was really excited about with the Steam Deck OLED was that I was able to move my two terabyte SSD that I bought from iFixit over to my Steam Deck OLED from my Steam Deck LCD the other day, and it was just perfect. All my games, all my save data, everything was on there, ready to go. I didn't have to mess with any drivers, anything else. I just made sure both Steam Decks were fully updated before I did the SSD swap, and that was it. All my games are now on my new Steam Deck OLED, so very happy to know that they are transferable like that. As you can see here, all the screws on the Steam Deck OLED are the same general size and shape and length that I could tell at least. I was really happy about that because on the original LCD model, they were of varying shapes and sizes uh, and lengths, and I was concerned that I might do them wrong. So I, I made sure to always put them in the exact order that I took them out of the Steam Deck in, uh, just to make things a little bit easier and more organized. From here, getting the clips undone on the OLED model is not an easy task. It's definitely not as easy as the LCD model was. They're a little bit tighter, a little bit harder to pop off, but personally, I think that's a good thing for durability. Uh, if you drop your Steam Deck, it's not gonna just shatter open, which is great. And obviously it has the screws holding it in place too. The clips are pretty easy to take off. Just make sure you actually remove your SD card before you take the clips off, because as you can see here, I got the SD card out at the last possible second before I ripped it in half. So um, make sure before you undo your clips or anything that you do take your SD card out uh, so you don't break it. But otherwise, getting the clips out is pretty easy. You want to start on the right side by the trigger and then work your way all around the console. And then once you get to the bottom, it pretty much just pops right open. At this point, it's time to take the heat shield off. You'll notice there's a ribbon connector that runs across the bottom of the heat shield. I've found that it's best to just unplug this ribbon connector on that left side just to make sure it doesn't get bent or damaged at all. Uh, I went ahead and used the iFixit little tweezers here. You have to flip up a little plastic cover, as you'll see I do here, and then just very gently lift that ribbon cable up and out over the little pieces that hold it in place. From there, that's the only ribbon cable that you need to remove, um, and now you can actually go ahead and unscrew the heat shield. The heat shield is held in place only by the two screws, one in the top left and one in the bottom left. Unlike the Steam Deck LCD, which had three screws, one hidden under the heat shield, this one just has the two, which is really nice. But when you're taking it out, be really careful. As you'll see here in the bottom right corner, there's a very small little black prong that can get bent really easily um, when you're pulling the heat shield out. So just be really careful not to bend it like I did in the video and try to keep it as flat as possible, and then you can just lean the heat shield out of the way, but try not to put too much pressure on either of the cables that are down there. At this point, you can go ahead and just unscrew the SSD. It's a single screw, and the SSD lifts up slightly, and you just pull it right out of place. I just gently wiggle it out of place, and then you'll see the SSD does have a little heat cover on there. I believe it's a heat cover. Um, I personally go ahead and keep the one that came with the Steam Deck, OLED just to be safe. iFixit also comes with their own heat shield cover you can use as well, so whatever you prefer. But from there, we're just gonna undo everything we've already done. So you put the new SSD back in the Steam Deck OLED, grab that screw, and screw that SSD right back down into place again.
Once the SSD is screwed back into place, then we can go ahead and put that heat shield back over everything. Just be really careful again with the ribbon connectors and that metal piece sticking out of the heat shield in the bottom right corner. That is where one of the backplate screws is gonna screw through later. So just do your best to make sure it's really flattened out and aligned with the hole so there's no issues installing your backplate and screws later. Just to make sure that the heat shield stayed in place while I attached the ribbon cable, this time I did go ahead and screw the heat shield back into place before I put the ribbon cable back in that little connector. Uh, so I went ahead and yeah, just put those two screws in there. And then the ribbon connector, when you're putting it back in, try to get a very gentle um, but strong grip on it. And you need to feed it at an, a 45 degree angle into the connecting piece. There's two little tiny pieces of plastic sticking out one on either side. So you want to grab that ribbon connector cable and tilt it down slightly and fit the little edges of it around those pieces. You can tell immediately once it's locked into place and then you just go ahead and fold the plastic cover down to make sure it's held firmly in place there. At this point, I did a little extra pushing on the heat shield just to make sure that piece stayed flat in the bottom right corner and I was good to put the cover back on. So uh, I went ahead and just clicked it right into place. Unfortunately, my mic did block out the audio from the very first click. It was super satisfying and super loud. So the mic uh, rejected it, which is unfortunate, but um, was able to attach all the clips very easily. Just went around the edges, making sure each piece uh, clicked into place. And then I also do walk back around the edges again, just to make extra sure I didn't miss anything because uh, it can be kind of easy to do, especially if ones on either side of a clip are in place and the middle one's not. Um, sometimes it can look like it's closed and it's not. So, And then I put the SD card back in the Steam Deck and I'm gonna go ahead and plug it in and make sure everything turns on okay. I do this after I've already installed the back cover, but I probably would recommend trying to turn it on before you put the back cover on just to make sure that everything is powering on and working so you don't have to undo all the clips again if you need to fix something inside. It does take a little bit for the Steam Deck to actually boot up, so I did speed up this footage a little bit. It can take up to 30 or 45 seconds for it to boot up all the way, so don't freak out if your Steam Deck doesn't immediately turn on and ask for you to sign in. Also, if your Steam Deck won't turn on at all, before you do anything else or try to open up the Steam Deck again, make sure that the power cable you have plugged into it is securely plugged into the Steam Deck and is also running to an active power outlet and there's power coming from it. The Steam Deck won't turn on unless there's power charging it because of the battery storage mode we put it into earlier. I did log into the Steam Deck really quick and check my storage just to make sure that all the games and everything was showing up correctly. But from there, we're good to just go ahead and install the screws just like before. I did speed up this footage again so you don't have to watch me install screws for several minutes. But all the screws are the same size again, so it's, it's really not a big deal just putting them into the place where they came from. And then I do go ahead and tighten them just a tiny bit more at the end just to make sure they're very securely in there uh, so there's not any issues later with one of them being loose. Overall, I'm just so happy with the repairability of the Steam Deck and the Steam Deck OLED. From original parts being sold on iFixit's website to the SSD you can buy from iFixit that supports up to two terabytes of M.2 storage at much faster speeds. Even the tools that I bought in this and used in this video to repair the Steam Deck I bought from iFixit. Just an amazing, amazing product. So thank you, Steam, for this. And thank you guys for watching this video. If you did like the video, please go ahead and like and subscribe. And I'll see you guys around. Thank you so much.